This video was taken one wintry Texas night in 1997 by four friends in search of a good time who would soon become baffled witnesses to a mysterious phenomenon. All headed to go see the ghost. Legend has it that this railroad crossing is haunted by the ghosts of children killed during the Depression when their school bus collided with a runaway train. When cars stop near the crossing, it is said that ghost children push the car to the other side of the tracks to safety, leaving their handprints as evidence of their handiwork. On this night, the friends stop their car about 30 yards from the track and shut off the engine. Car's off, we're already moving. Holy crap, we're moving and it's uphill. <laughs> Inexplicably, their car rolled all the way up the hill and over the tracks. After their roll, they checked their dusted car for handprints and saw this. Oh, oh my God, look at that one. <laughs> no, do you see it? But their close encounters were hardly over. They took this photo that night. When they got home, they brightened it on their computer and saw this ghostly figure emerge from the darkness. Can we recreate that fateful night and figure out what really happened? Here we have a perfect storm of paranormal activity. Whatever the hell that means. <laughs> this is pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of locations around the world where you appear to be rolling uphill when you're in a car. You know what I love about this one is there's sort of a dual um, psychic phenomenon going on here. There's the paranormal pushing of the cars over the railroad tracks, as well as there's some ghostly images that appear in some of Here we see something there. It'll be fun to test that, uh, that phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and of course, trying to capture a ghost, that's, uh, we've got our work cut out for us. Well, we've done it before. Well, we're gonna have to do it again. Okay. <laughs> Let's All get right. our stuff together and uh, head to Texas. Okay. where the phenomenon occurs, we meet up with two of the witnesses in the video. Ross Haven is a corporate analyst and the driver in the video. His wife, Holly, is an office manager and was in the back seat. They brought their two children, Andy and Parker. Parker, shoot it! No! It seems very unexplained. Your car feels like it's moving uphill. It definitely takes off at a slow creep and picks up speed as you're getting to the top of the track instead of necessarily on the other side so i'm the most skeptical of the, the bunch okay um you know that night i was trying to disprove it with with everything i mean we we had a, a laptop with us that had gps and it was showing elevations and things like that what's strange is it takes off so slow i mean you can actually hear the the wheels kind of start to creak and pick up speed and pick up speed I mean, it's creepy. You know, you're in the car and all of a sudden it's it's just moving and there's no explained reason for why your car's moving. I don't know what I believe. I know that, that I couldn't explain it myself, so therefore I tend to start believing other people's uh, right. ex explanations. All right, well, let's do some tests okay. and meet back here. Thanks we'll for the see info. You in a moment. Grab a seat and we'll see you shortly. first test, we're going to see if we can get a car to roll uphill. To the naked eye, this road certainly seems to rise. So this is where the illusion, if there is an illusion here, that's where it looks like it's starting to go uphill. We put a rubber ball in that spot to see if it will go over the tracks. Hold on a second, it doesn't seem to be working at all. Here. <laughs> wow, look at it go. Hey, it really moves. Next, we're going to use a laser to measure the actual slope in front of the tracks. Okay, where's the train on there now? Right now, right there, it's at uh, one and seven eighths. Right there, it's at three and a half inches. This part of the, uh, right. the pavement is actually higher than that part. We then used a level and discovered that there's a slight downhill slope almost the entire way up the road. The road's decline is nearly invisible to the naked eye. 
which adds to the illusion of the road being uphill. So it's kind of an optical illusion as far as we can tell so far. Well, that really is sloping up there, but the, the point is that you're gain, you've gained enough momentum if you started your car here to get you beyond that slope, right? At least that's what we think. Let's test out our theory. First, if we're correct, any car left in neutral should roll over the track. You're in neutral now. You just got your foot on the brake. Now just go ahead and take your foot off the brake and let's see what happens. Well, it started right off the bat. Well, Holly, your bearings are fine. Well, that's picking up pretty good speed. We're about 100 feet from the tracks here. Wow, it's really going, too. It's about 50 feet. Wow. There he goes. That was going pretty fast. That was going very fast. Next, we'll try two different makes of cars to see if weight or center of gravity makes any difference. First, we'll try a new Dodge Magnum, which is lighter than the Havens car and possesses a lower center of gravity. So uh, let's see it go. Foot off the brake. Foot let's. Off the brake. Let's see you go. Well, his is starting off a little slower here, which is interesting. He's got a lower center of gravity than the other car. I'm not so sure he's going to make it. Well, he's not really slowing down too much. Is he going to get stuck? By Jove. Go, 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 go. He made it. OK, he's going over. Boy, that one, I wasn't sure if it was going to make it or not. Now we'll try a 1964 Chevy pickup, which is heavier than the Havens car and has a higher center of gravity. Okay, take your foot off the brake and let's see her go. Oh, this is the slowest start of them all. Is he gonna make it? I think he's got enough speed. He actually picked up a little more than the last car. Yep, he's up and he's over. But one of the legends was you come right up to the railroad tracks and then they push you You're over. You're right on it. Yeah, so maybe we should have them, just as an additional one, try just a little by our little cross over there. That's actually a good idea. All right, let's bring them right up to here. OK, so uh, why don't we get in our spots? Back, back, people. You, I need to see some ID. OK, so I'll back away from the car. Nobody touch the car. Let's go. Take your foot off the brake. Look, it started right wow, up. Wow, right away. Well, there's a little hesitation there. It slowed down a little. Now it's picking picked up again. I think we may have found a dip. He's right behind me. I wouldn't talk about your director that way, sir. Coming up on the poor form. Now it is Kinda going rolling. slower. Now there it goes. See, now it went over a bump there. Right. But it's still going. There's another little bump. Oh, 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 oh I think we found something out. And there's a train coming. Whoa. What the? Uh, hey, that's cheating. That's cheating. Flat out cheating. What? There is a dip here. Yes, there is. And I think his rear wheel was in that dip. Right. Well, the front wheel was right on this, uh, right on the track. Right on the rail. So there. he didn't have quite enough momentum right. to get him beyond that. Right. And he locked up here. So it's momentum caused by a nearly invisible downward slope that pushes cars, regardless of their weight or center of gravity, up the incline in front of the tracks. So why does it look like it's going up when it's going down? Well, there's a few factors. You have a false horizon, there is a dip in the road, and there's just this optical illusion that happened. For our second test, we'll try and explain the handprints on the car. Our theory is all cars have handprints. It's driving down a dusty road that makes them visible. Here we have Andy and Parker plant some prints for our test. Then we use baby powder to stand in for the dusty road they were driving on that night. Go hard. Press your hand right there. Go hard. Just like that. And then pull it off. OK, now your sister. I want you to put one right here. Now, as I look at it in the light, I can see the little oil spots. So let's see what happens now. I sprinkle a little of this on. You see him there? That is definitely a handprint. Well, I think the, the feather duster helps, and especially when you dust it off, things kind of come out. So I think when we did the test the first time, um, there may have been more there that we, we weren't aware of. For our third test, we're going to go through familiar ground. 
and create a ghost in a photograph. I believe this is the one we're going to duplicate right here. First, we'll try it low-tech by double-exposing Polaroid film. Clark will make the ghost out of some black poster board and white paint. What do you think, a ghost? Then we'll go shoot it in the forest. Well, it'll be dark as soon as those lights go off. Well, not when the flash goes off. Well, then turn off the flash. I need the... F how will I see anything? Well, I got a flashlight. <laughs> That'll actually work. Okay. okay. Why don't you back up a little, Patrick? Make it smaller. Back, 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 back. There. There we go. I've disabled the motor on this, and the film is still in here. It hasn't been spit out, and since it hadn't been spit out, it hasn't gone through the rollers to cause it to start its processing. And uh, so one exposure has been made on it. Now I'm going to put it in the camera so the motor does work. Now I'm ready to shoot a, a shot of the sign without that tripod in the shot. Are you ready? Lights ready. out. Lights out. All righty, there's our picture. The double exposure looks okay, but let's see if we can take it to the next level with a more high-tech approach. We're going to shoot the track with a digital camera and then superimpose a ghost we made in Photoshop onto the shot. So we have uh, our witness's camera that they took that original photograph with when they found the ghost. So I wanted to take this camera and... I'm... Is this your daddy's? I'm going to take a few pictures with it. Is that okay? Okay. No, this time I'm going to take a picture of that sign. I know, it seems silly, doesn't it? Well, that's the kind of guy I am. How it feels now? You don't like it so much now, do you? Oh, huh? now, do you? Hey, could you point Crazy. that light directly on the sign? Well, I need to come behind you then to straight shoot it down the... No, that's fine. If you just get more light on it. I see it a little bit here, just if it has more light. Oh. You just won't listen now, will you? I know what you were saying. Fine, fine. You see what I'm saying? Oh, I know what you were saying. You I, see what I'm I knew saying? what you were saying then. You see what I'm saying? Okay, let's have a big lights out. There it goes. Now we'll move our pre made ghost into the photo we just took. It could have been hoaxed, but do we really think the Havens are making this up? No, we don't. I, mean, I, I knew there had to be something in the picture because mm -hmm. I didn't put it there. So yeah. <laughs> it had to be something. And also you can see behind her, I mean, you can see the railroad tracks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. go kind of behind her almost. Absolutely. Which I call her because <laughs> What else are we going to call her? <laughs> right? <laughs> you had two of the best go out and try to recreate your photo and, and come close, but, but can't prove it beyond belief, then... Then, you know, what, what was it? <laughs> That's a very good question. Let's recap. In our first test, we discovered that it was momentum, not the hands of little ghost children, that pushes cars over these tracks. Our second test showed us that the handprints Ross and Holly found that night were probably already on their car. And while our third test suggested some ways the ghost could have been faked, it wasn't enough to sway any of us. It was kind of neat for us to see that they could disprove part of it, but the other, we, you know, we know it had to be true. Uh, kind of glad to see that, that they weren't able to prove the photo because it makes me believe more that there is, you know, possibly something else out there. Well, we want to say thanks, you guys, for Absolutely. hanging in there. Well, thanks for helping out. <laughs> and thank you, Parker. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> they won't go to bed for another two hours now.